Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing about three or four recipes for dinner that my family has eaten over the past week and that we have enjoyed. Um, I never know when I film this if it's going to be like three or four dinners because I usually don't film this until or I usually film it before I even do the, th the video. So sometimes I plan on sharing three, sometimes four. It just depends and you'll see. I don't know at the moment, but um, I always plan on sharing at least three, sometimes four. These are budget-friendly recipes. These are family-friendly recipes. We have five kids. Number six is growing. So these are just tried and true recipes that we make for our kids that they happen to like. If something's new, I'll let you know, and then I'll let you know if we like it. And I will always link all recipes or anything like that down below. I'll either, well, I'll link the recipe or I'll have the recipe typed out down below. Normally, they're not my recipes. They're just things that I find. So normally it's just a link. So I don't do any kind of like reaction at the end or if we liked it or anything, but I will definitely let you know if we don't like it. I will be like, no, 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 no. Don't make this. It's terrible. No one liked it. Something like that. I'll warn you if it's bad for sure. But normally they're just recipes that I have made before, we like. We've got kids, so we've gotta pretty much stay with what I know they're gonna eat. So <laughs> that's what I always tend to make, is things that I know that they're gonna go ahead and eat. So here we go with some meals that I made for my family this week. So for tonight's dinner, I'm just using three chicken breasts because we don't have the two big kids tonight. We just have little kids. If I was doing this for big kids, I would probably do about five. But these are kind of thick, so I think this is gonna make a lot more than I even think. Um, I might actually end up saving that one for tomorrow because we're having chicken again tomorrow and just using two of these and cutting them in half. Um, we're gonna do green beans, potatoes, ranch packets, and a stick of butter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is trim off this fat and then cut them in half see what I'm working with. When the big kids are here, I actually make two different trays. I do like a chicken one and then I do a uh, potato and green bean one because I have to make so much extra. Okay, so I ended up cutting that one in half, and then I was like, well, that's gonna be too thin, and these aren't that thick. They're thick, but they're not as thick as I thought originally, so scratch the whole cutting them in half. I just layered those two together, and I ended up using two packets of ranch because sometimes I feel like it's not enough seasoning when you use just one, but I peeled and washed the potatoes and then diced them up, just put drain the green beans and put them in here. You saw what I did with the chicken, I seasoned it, and then I just put ranch on everything and butter on everything. I have the oven preheated to 350. We're gonna cover it with foil, bake for an hour, and it's that simple. A lot of people do Italian chicken. I like the Italian, my husband likes the ranch better. So that's why I wanted to share this because you can use ranch packets instead of Italian packets. He prefers the ranch, I prefer the Italian. And last time we had the Italian, but this time we're gonna do the ranch. Also with dinner, I'm going to be making no yeast dinner rolls. They're so simple. They don't require like any time at all really. But the recipe only makes five. So I'm going to double the recipe. 
I will leave the original recipe down below if you wanna use the original recipe so you don't have to double it. But we're gonna do two cups of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of salt, one cup of milk, and four tablespoons of mayonnaise. Now remember, that's all doubled ingredients. Um, and then you bake at 350 for about 15 minutes until they're golden brown, and that's it. We've had these one time before, and they were so good for being quick and easy rolls. I mean, you couldn't even tell that you hadn't really spent hours on them. So that's good in my opinion. Oh, and you put them in little muffin tins, it says. I haven't, like I said, I've only made it one time before, so I didn't vary from the recipe when I made it because it was my first time making it and this is only the second time. But I'm thinking you could probably add like cheese and garlic or rosemary and garlic or whatever to it if you want to like kind of season them up. And I'm not sure that you even have to put them in a little muffin tin here. You could probably just shape them and put them on whatever, but we're gonna do this. So that was pretty much exactly spot on. It made 10. So again, we're gonna bake 350 for 15 minutes. And you can like take the time to shape them nicely, but we don't really care. We're gonna rip them apart and eat them anyway. So we don't need to be all fancy about it. But normally I do try to make things nicely, but just, I'm not feeling it tonight. It's gonna be bread, whether it's shaped like this or it's shaped in a perfect ball. And sometimes it's just like that. Am I right? I know y'all feel me on that. Some days, you're just lucky to get some food on the table. So here's how the no yeast dinner rolls come out. Exactly how they went in. And they don't really look all that cooked, but they are. So this is it. They're pretty good. Try it and let me know what you think. So here's our chicken, green beans, and potatoes right out of the oven. Now we are having ranch chicken, green beans, and potatoes with no yeast rolls and some applesauce. For the chicken itself, not the sauce, I'm using three chicken breasts, some milk, some cheddar cheese, some Ritz crackers, I need to crush them up. I'm gonna season the chicken both sides with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And then we're gonna do um, cream of chicken, sour cream, and butter for the sauce for the top, but that's obviously separate. I'm gonna do this can of corn. We have four biscuits left from last night, so we'll just finish those off. And I'm gonna make mashed potatoes, so when I'm done with the chicken and get that in, I'm going to wash or peel and wash in some potatoes and put them in the Instant Pot to get those ready to go. But this recipe is from Just a Pinch. It's crispy cheddar chicken. It is really, really, really good. So I need to go ahead and preheat the oven to 400.
So it's said to cut the each chicken breast into three big chunks. Dip it in the milk, dip it in the cheese, dip it in the crackers. I think the last time I did this, I just ended up mixing the cheese and the crackers together. I feel like that's a lot simpler. So just dip it in the milk, dip it in cheese and crackers mixed together. So we're gonna cover this with foil, bake at 400 for 35 minutes, and then we're gonna remove the foil and bake for another 10 to 15. And then while that 10 to 15 is going, we're gonna do the sauce on the stove. So for the sauce, you do one can of cream of chicken, with two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of sour cream. I'm actually gonna double it because we like sauce. I'd rather have too much sauce than not enough. And also I'm making mashed potatoes, so I figure the sauce would be good on the mashed potatoes as well. So I'm gonna make double it. So we're gonna do two cans, four tablespoons of butter and four tablespoons of sour cream. So here's the chicken when it comes straight out of the oven. It looks so good. And then you pour this sauce on top of it. We have our mashed potatoes, our corn, and a salad. So here's how our dinner came out. Our crispy cheddar chicken with the sauce. I put sauce on my mashed potatoes, corn, and salad. So our Thursday dessert is pumpkin pie and probably our Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Who knows how long it's gonna to take to finish this. So for our pumpkin pies, I'm just gonna be using the recipe on the back of this um, Libby's pumpkin. And I don't ever have a set recipe for pumpkin pie. I always just use whatever the recipe is in the can, whether it's Walmart, Aldi, Libby's, whatever. I just use that recipe because obviously it's like a no fail kind of recipe. We're using these pie crusts and I'm making two because this comes in a two pack and I'll have other plans for the other one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make two and I can freeze one if needed. So it says the first thing is to do three quarter cup of sugar. And again, I'm doubling it. So I'm gonna have to do six of these because this is a quarter cup. A teaspoon of salt, which I need to go downstairs and get like my actual big container of salt instead of this little tiny thing but I don't feel like it right this minute, but I do need to refill this. And it says one teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ginger, a quarter teaspoon of cloves. But I have this pumpkin pie spice, which is like the same. So I'm gonna do what it calls for. So one teaspoon and then about a, yeah. That's right. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of the other stuff too. A teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm just making a mess, you guys. As you can tell, I don't ever feel the need to be exact in my stuff. Cloves aren't even open yet. I need half a teaspoon of cloves because it costs for a quarter, but I'm trying to do just a little bit extra because that pumpkin pie spice wasn't quite enough. And then how much ginger? Half a teaspoon of ginger. I think that's it for the dry ingredients. You mix the dry in a small bowl. In your big bowl, you beat eggs. So I'm doing four. You stir in your pumpkin. Mix in your dry ingredients. And then a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. So again, I'm gonna do two. So now I need to get my pie crust ready and then pour this in and bake it. Now we bake these at 425 for 15 minutes and then reduce the temperature to 350 and bake for another 30 to 40. So here's our pumpkin pies fresh out of the oven. All right, for these easy copycat McRibs, we are doing banquet, 
six backyard barbecue boneless patties. It says you can put them in the microwave or you can put them in the oven. So I'm gonna throw them in the oven real quick. Well, not real quick. It takes almost an hour in the oven. <laughs> um, you need pickles. So we have hamburger dill chips here and onions sliced and Philly cheesesteak rolls. That's what mine are. I mean, I'm sure you can use any kind of supper you want. Use whatever you have. Use whatever you prefer. And then I'm just throwing um, fries in the oven as well. So that's gonna be our dinner tonight. And I'm so excited to try it. So I do want to give an update on the McRib. I like it. <laughs> she doesn't like it, but that's no surprise. It was amazing. What do you think? I had two. Yeah. Right? He got up and made a second one. And yeah, if I had room, I would have a second one because it was that good. Try it. It is delicious for sure. Done this if you had the room. <laughs> Thanks. So that was it. Hope you guys got some new ideas. Hope you got some new recipes. If you try any of them, let me know. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and enjoy these other videos we have coming up for you. Also, you can turn on the red bell notifications so you're notified of every new video we post. Thank you so much.